<laughs> it's pretty breezy. <laughs> Welcome back to Frugal Outdoors and myself Dylan. And today we are fishing at, uh, where are we fishing? Allen Bay, basically the Needles. It's the very last beach you can fish before you get to the Needles. And there's quite a few of us down here as you can see. Loads of birds working but they're just out of reach and every time we stop, start casting out they move. So I'm going to get my rig set up, get my rod set up rather, get my rig sorted, get the bait sorted and then maybe I'll have a little chuck with some feathers again later on just to try and get some fresh mackerel for the freezer really. One for bait and one for food. Targets, no target really tonight, just want to catch some fish. To have, I've had no prolific sessions whatsoever so I'm hoping this one will get a few more than one and a little bit bigger than a six ounce rat. But like I say, five of us fishing, five of us fishing nine rods in the water. Might even be ten if Nobby's brought a second rod. Hopefully we can get into a few fish. But let's get set up. So we're fishing on the right hand side of the lift today, which I've never fished. I've fished down here probably at least 10 times and I've always fished the left hand side. So I'm excited to try this side, but I've just been <laughs> informed by Nobby that it can be snaggy this side. So changing my spools straight onto the 25 pound straight through. And that way, hopefully I won't lose it because my other reel, my other spools have got 16 pound and a, and a tapered leader, which is no good. I don't want to lose that. Right, I've got this one ready, so I'm going to chuck this one straight out. Uh, so this is the Daiwa, uh, the Tournaments Pro Surf. Uh, so I just let Nobby have a chuck with it, and he seems to think it's all right. So, and he's fished with centuries and all sorts, every rod going pretty much. So he's uh, he said it's a good rod, nice and light, nice and powerful. So, let's say I've got me 25 pounds straight through. And on the end, just because it was the most easiest thing to get out, got a whopping great whole squid. It doesn't look very big there, but there's my hand. Big old squid, big old pulley, six ounce lead. Let's whack this one out and then we'll get the other one ready. Absolutely massive bait. It hasn't gone very far at all. Wind is coming straight at us as well, so that's not helping, but it's out there, we've got bait in the water. So let's get the other one set up. Here we go, and this is the second rod that I'm chucking out. My Mag 4 mixed ground. I have got another rod coming. Uh, I've got a Century Tip Tornado match coming as well, so I'll be replacing this one with that. Uh, same deal, 25 pounds straight through. It's got, like I said before, it's got exactly the same K-Wag eyes as that one, Fuji. If anything, this is actually a bit softer than that. Um, and on this rig, uh, this one I've got, a, it's a Wessex rig, but it's clipped. So as you can see there, that's on a running ledger there, you can see. Uh, but it's clipped up there, so essentially, it will give me a little bit of play, basically a little bit of mackerel, little bit of mackerel, size ones. This one is target in bream. The one that's out there, well that's targeting anything really, bass, conger, ray, like I say I've literally just got mackerel, squid and a couple of crab and uh, yeah, this one's going to be fishing two hooks all night, that one's going to be fishing a big bait all night and let's see what comes along. There 
we going? We're fishing. Turn you around a minute. There we go. So, both rods are out. I don't normally do this camera angle so I can see that, but I'm gonna try and move it. We've got a bit of drizzle coming in, in all, in all fairness, so hopefully it's not gonna rain. But it's rained pretty much every time I've been fishing. Certainly lately. But fingers crossed, we'll get a dry session. And so I'm not gonna fish mega. It's probably just about on high tide now, after we faffed around trying to get some mackerel. But yeah, it's high tide now. We're gonna fish probably three and a half, four hours down. Essentially, it's a short session, so I'm just hoping we can pick something up. It'd be nice to show you something. But yeah, we don't know, do we? Like I say, re <laughs> reports are terrible. No one seems to be catching many fish. If they are, they're just in the right place, right time, and they're very, very lucky. I say I managed to weigh in on that last comp, but it was a six ounce wrath. So hopefully we can get something a little bit better. But yeah, buzzing. As always, super excited to be out fishing. All right, let's spin you around, and see the needles, see the rods. Hopefully we'll get a fish. Okay, so while we're waiting, it's always a good opportunity, like you get your first two baits in the water, you get settled, right, prep another couple of rigs. So, next rig that will be going out, again, six ounce lead, quite a longest trace, I could believe this is 100 or 120 pound main body, rig body, that's about a metre long, so three and a half foot, three foot. And then we've got, basically it's half a joey, two thirds of a joey, basically I took the two bits off the tail, each side of the fillet, to rig up those size ones, and then that's the rest of it. So I've bound that up nice and tight, because basically the tighter it is, it's gonna continuously squeeze juice out of it, and hopefully get some scent in the water. It's only on a 3.0, 3.0 uh, Aberdeen, and a, uh, a 3.0 Oxford speed cook on the top as well. A little bit of uh, tubing for resistance, and that's on 80 pound. Might be a bit light if I get a decent sized conger, but I think 80 pound should be all right. I mean, Christ, I'm not going for giants, but it'd be nice to get something decent. I love, absolutely love fishing down here. I haven't fished, the first time I've fished down here all year. We had a comp cancelled last earlier in the year because it was a landslide. I mean, if you look behind, it's just landslides all the way along and that way. So you got to have your wits about you a little bit. But uh, like I say, I mean that one's a relatively old one, and I've had a little scan before. You know, before I set up, it's like yeah, okay, I think I'm all right. But yeah, so the, the access was closed because it took away the steps. So we couldn't get down there to fish. So this is the first time of the year. So I'm super excited. And like I like to say, it's a pretty epic place to fish when you've got the needles literally just there. Hopefully the fish show up. Now that is an absolute beast of a swimming crab. Don't make things very well because he had my hook right in his gob. But it's huge. Claws on that. That's a big old, big old swimming crab, velvet crab. I think they call it devil crab as well or something. But I'll chuck it in anyway.
first bit of interest on the left hand rod. But to be honest, I thought it might have been a bream, but I think I was just hoping it was a bream. But it's another rocklin. Shore rocklin again. They got some teeth on them, I didn't realise. Not a bad size, but pretty. Love the spots. Look at that. Proper leopard spots. But right, I'm going to get this one back in anyway. Hopefully, get someone else. Ah, there we go, we're off the mark. Pretty shaft to be honest. I know it's only a, uh, a slug, a uh, jaw rocking, but like I say, I'll take it because it means I haven't blanked now, so. Can relax a little bit, but I still want to really focus on just trying to get a couple of other species would be nice. Like I say, the, the amount of times I've been fishing of late, and I've literally just had one fish every time, so. Well, saying that, I did have three rats, but you know, when they're like that, it's a bit difficult to sort of count them really. Fortunately one was big enough to get in and weigh. So. But yeah, so I've got a, one of those Joey Mac calls. Basically I've just taken like two inches maybe off the off the tip tip of the tail and then just chuck the rest of it out. And then yeah, I've got a uh, Portsmouth loop rig on the other one with a 2-0 on the top and a 2-0 panel on the bottom. It's got a bit of crab on it. Uh, and squid on the bottom. But yeah, it'd be nice to pull a bream, like I say, a bream and a bass would be lovely. I've got the baits for it, I've got the rigs for it. They do turn up here. It's not like a really massively well-known spot. It's a pretty good bass mark, I think. But like I say, we're on a drop in tide, so. But it's moving, that's the main thing, so there's tide. Yeah, fingers crossed we can get another one. Oh well, just had my first casualty. Got into a snag, I pulled it all out, but I've, just, I've broken one of my snoods, so. But I can live with that, at least I got the lead back. But yeah, it's been pretty quiet again. Like I say, no one else has caught anything yet. So we're in, we're fishing in, I mean it's, 10 past nine. So we've probably been fishing for maybe two, two and a half hours. But yeah, so now it's 10 past nine, the light is starting to go. Certainly over the back of the needles there, it's pretty gray and gloomy. It's pretty bright on camera. But, but yeah, we'll keep plucking along, try and get something else. I've got the one up, one down out there again now. And a, and a whole squid on a pulley. So like I say, I'm fishing one big bait, and I mean a big bait. And then two smaller baits. So I scratch him with one, target him with the other really.
So this is the uh, the loop rig that I'm fishing with tonight. But, so I've shown it before, but I really like this rig. It's caught me some fish. I've had rays on it, all sorts of other bits and bobs. Like I say, I haven't exactly had a prolific year yet, but it works. So it's a Portsmouth loop rig, which means it's got one hook snood at the top, which has got a spring. That one goes down clips onto the other one, which I'll try and do now. So that one clips onto there, which has got a cascade swivel just above the other hook. I've actually got a panel on this. And then that other hook goes all the way down, clips into the, into the lead. So when that does pop free, which obviously is not under tension at the moment, you've got a nice long trace on the bottom which is why it's got good for rays really. So you've got like 80 centimetres on the bottom there with that panel hook. And then the other one's at the top. So it's a one up, one down effectively. Like I say, fish it with for bream, size two hooks, smaller hooks even for flat fish and stuff like that. Because then you get two baits. One is definitely on the bottom and the other one's a little bit off. So there we go, that's going out. Oh yeah, well it's getting dark now and still no one else is caught. Real shame really, because you really want to, you know, when there's a few of you down here, there's six of us fishing now. It'd be really nice to grab a few fish out. I mean, it looks like it's mid-afternoon, but it's, I don't know, half nine, quarter to ten. Well, I ain't going to give it, I'm not going to give it much longer. I'll get a light set up on the uh, rod hooks in a minute. I, I can barely see them from here, but like I say, it's light on camera. Yeah, we'll keep chucking out the bait, see what happens. Right, so I know I said that I was going to do away with that, <laughs> that Wessex rig with the size ones, but John's just had a really nice bream, best part of two pound, it's got to be two pound, we'll find out in a minute, I think they're going to weigh it. And it's his first one of the year as well, so super chuffed you, John. Well done, mate. Uh, but yeah, it does mean there's some bream out there. So, hmm. get that Wessex, the, uh, that Wessex rig out again, I guess, and whack some squid and some mackerel on it and chuck it out there. Yeah, it'd be nice to see a bit of a uh, bend in the rod. Yeah, well, it's properly dark now, which is a great thing. Like I say, apart from those two fish, my Rocklin and John's bream, nothing else has come out. Which is a little bit disheartening, really, you know. We've all come down, we're all chucking loads of bait out, we're just not getting anything. But yeah, we're going to keep plugging away anyway. I mean, it's half ten now, I was going to knock it on the head, but I am going to give it another hour. Pretty much at the bottom of the tide, so okay. We, we are sort of ebbing tide, sometimes there's only like a four or five hour tide, and then the incoming tide, the flood, is a lot longer. Uh, sometimes it can be six, seven hours, seven, eight hours, even. Um, but yeah, we'll keep going anyway, see if we can pick something else up. Oh, made up, Jack from work. He's just had a lovely little bass, three pound, I say little, three pound, lovely, lovely table size bass. Yeah, he's stoked, I'm gonna go and get a picture for him. Yeah, lovely fish, Nobby's just had a conga, three pound-ish, three and a half pounds, so. Might be switching on, it'd be great if it was. Yeah, lovely bass, three pound three. I just had a knock on my big mackerel bait, but it hasn't come to anything. I'm gonna get another, another rig ready, bait it up, get it out there. Thinking maybe some of my baits have been a bit pretty big, to be honest, but I have been trying to go for a bass or something like that, so. 
Oh, I'm stoked for him. Got him. <laughs> Calling down the beach going, I think I've got something decent on here. A little strap conga. Not huge, but maybe, God, I don't know, maybe a pound and a half, maybe two pound tops. But let's get it back, it's another fish. So, yeah. Hopefully, like I say, hopefully, the fishing is starting to improve. Ah, oh, that was a bit of a crappy five, 10 minute. Both rods snagged and I was pulling one out and it came out, went straight into a snag and snapped. And then I snapped the other one, so I've lost both rigs. Oh. Yeah, but we're fishing again anyway. So. But to be honest, I don't think I'll give it much longer now. Time's getting on, but then we did have a little flurry and I've got a feeling I had another bite, which is what took me into a snag. But we always think that, don't we? Oh, I've literally just cast that. <laughs> Another strap conga, a bit smaller than the last one, it's not very big at all, maybe a pound, pound and a half, but uh, it's a fish, that's three fish tonight, it's the best session I've probably had for a long time, none of them have been particularly big fish, but it's nice to have a, you know, see a bend in the rod, reel some, something in and you've actually got something on the end of the line, not just a crab. So I'll chuck this one back, get another bait out there. Well, I think I'm going to call it a session there, end of session. Uh, so yes, thanks for stopping by. As always, it's massively appreciated Like for everyone to sort of spend some time watching one of my videos. is uh, It's quite a humbling experience, really. So it is hugely appreciated. All your comments are always massively appreciated. I'm still really liking that rod. It definitely punches it. Yeah, it gets a bait way out there. Uh, sensitivity isn't quite there but you can't have it all you can't get something out there massively uh, you know get a bait at mega distance and have the sensitivity I just don't think there's a rod that actually does that so but I'm happy with it but I'm gonna pack up if I do reel a fish in you'll see it now you probably haven't seen a fish so until the next one please take care stay safe and maybe see you out there cheers <laughs>